What is happening, everyone? Welcome to G-Ball Vision. We have an exciting knife to dig into here today. We are talking about none other than the Kunwu S-Tau. Now, I unboxed this quite a few weeks back, and if you didn't see that unboxing, I will link a card so you can go ahead and check it out. Uh, this is the first Kunwu that I have ever had, and... I have carried it quite extensively and used it quite a bit since the unboxing of this knife. And I have nothing but good things to say about this knife. It is just absolutely exceptional. Let's go ahead and we'll dig into some of the materials. We'll do a quick spec check on it and then we'll kind of dig into a little bit of the overview. So we have an awesome sheep's foot blade here, a satin finish with Vanek Super Clean being the main characteristic of this knife. Uh, one of my favorite things about this knife is this blade. You have a nice straight edge here, quite a bit of blade, and then you still have some semblance of a pokey tip as well uh, it's going to be perfect for utility utility type tasks you know for edc type tasks whether it's breaking boxes down uh, opening boxes up uh, getting in behind strapping all that sort of thing this will just be exceedingly good at uh, because of that straight edge and how this kind of tapers down, uh, you're able to stay in a pretty lengthy cut as well. That is one thing that I've noticed. It is also very easy to choke up. Yeah, it's not really a designated spot here, but it's very easy to choke up and get a lot of control right above that tip for doing very precise or detailed type cuts and that is one of the things that i really look for in a knife that i'm going to praise as far as being a user goes i want to be able to a user knife for me has to be able to do fine detail cuts if i'm going to be using it as a work knife because there are times where it calls to be very precise on a certain cut. And that is one thing this does very well at. Now, it's going to be a pretty fidgety knife as well. You have an opening hole here. I call it the Superman hole. You have a very well done front flipper, and then you also have a rear flipper tab. They all work very well. You can thumb flick it out if you can keep your fingers off the lock bar. And then the reverse flick and the front flipper work very, very good. You can, the front flipper is so well designed, you can actually get ahead of it if you really give it the gas. You can sometimes beat the lock bar, which is just, you know, that's how well this front flipper is done and how much you can really get on it. Uh, I, I think I've done it once or twice where I've been able to get ahead of it and the knife actually come back down. Uh, so, but that, that has only happened once or twice and I was trying to do it. Uh, you do have a Tamascus pivot collar. You have some lasering done on the pivot with Kun Wu's little design there. And then you have Kun Wu's lasered mark here as well. It has been softened. It does not feel rough. Uh, I think the knife itself is just fantastic. You have a titanium uh, orange peel finish to this guy. And then the chamfered edges have like a horizontal milling done in them. So it's nice and soft. I love this thing. You have open construction. You have two standoffs here. And they do include other standoffs with it as well. So you can go with the blue or you can go with, I believe they are satin. I went with the blue, changed them out just to kind of go with the Tamascus pivot collar. They are still titanium, I believe. They're just anodized. 
Now, the pocket clip, it is going to be reversible. And I know that wire clips work very well. And I know they are very comfortable in hand. And this clip works very, very well. Very easy to get in and out of pocket. Uh, it's pretty deep carry, so you don't have much sticking out there. But, you know, sometimes I will choose form over function. And as much as I like how this clip operates and works and all that sort of thing, I would prefer a milled clip here. But that is, you know, far and away nothing to do with the knife itself. Not to mention they do offer now a, a titanium clip to go, you know, you can get it as a, a second, uh, you know, aftermarket. So there is options available if you want to change this guy out. Uh, so, you know, and I've had the chance to get one. And so I'm not in a huge hurry, but I do prefer a milled clip. Uh, it just looks better. It don't work as good. No, it doesn't. But I do prefer a milled clip as far as looks go. But... As far as ergonomics, you know, in hand, you don't feel it at all. As far as in and out of the pocket, it, it works just very, very good. So with all that being said, let's get a quick spec check on this thing. You're going to be getting three and a quarter of cutting edge, about three and a half to here, and then you're at like three and nine sixteenths to here or so and then eight inches overall so it is a great great size for the people who don't live in a three inch and under area this is just prime time it's a great size very ergonomic very comfortable it's a great looking knife a very unique sheep's foot blade in my opinion uh you don't see a ton where it's a sheep's foot. Typically, if I went like this, you might think, you know, you would think that's a worn cliff because of that straight edge, but it is actually a sheep's foot. So it, you know, and that's typical of a worn cliff is to have that nice straight edge coming to a real acute tip. I love how, because that gives you a lot of added strength here at this tip the way it rounds to it and you're just going to have a lot of strength there so you'll be able to do a ton of different pressure cuts with that not have any worry about it let's go ahead and throw it on the old scale here so about 4.1 uh that is not bad at all that's considerably light in my opinion uh seven eight ounces is when things start getting somewhat heavy but even that even then you know an 80 10 and that size knife does not bother me one bit why don't we go ahead and we'll throw up a few comparison knives we have the migron centurion here in its budget form pretty good comparison there how about the quiet carry drift the Megaron Taycog the TRM Adam how about the large pyrite so you can see there, that gives you a pretty good idea. The Pyrite is a pretty good size knife. How about the Atom is the bigger of these two. So the Neutron is a little bit smaller. And the Atom is almost right on point with it. So... That's a great reference there. And then the Nimble, 
which we'll go ahead and throw up here. Is going to be quite a bit smaller. So that should give you a reference there. It is a phenomenal size. Uh, this is eight inches is about exactly what I look for. And that's what she said. So why don't we go ahead and we'll also get a blade stock thickness here. So about 120 on the nose. Coming in about 13.5, 13 to 14 thousandths behind the edge. That's getting down there pretty thin, guys. That is pretty damn good uh and it still means maintains a good strength the, because of the way this blade is designed you know how it is it's going to be just a true workhorse for you and the vanex steel on top of this blade shape i often say that the quiet carry drift is you know a one and done type of knife if you get this you would potentially never need another knife you know as long as you don't lose this knife or snap it in half somehow uh but this knife this blade will last you forever well this knife came along and i would actually probably I mean, these two together is just an unstoppable duo. You have a nice drop point here and a nice utilitarian sheep's foot blade here. So you have, and they will both pretty much never rust. Uh, so there is a ton of lifetime in these uh, two knives here. But if I could only have one, I think that I, you know... As far as a user knife, an EDC knife, uh, I would go with the s -Tau. I have put the, the Vanex through quite a bit. I even took this to the ocean for a week and left it out. I wanted to see if I could get it to rust under just normal circumstance. You know, I didn't dip it in the ocean, dip it in the sand, and then leave it out in the sun for six days. But... You know, I did carry it, I did use it, and I did leave it out in the open air with no oil. And it's still as beautiful as the day I got it. So that's just a testament. It's one thing, you know, it's one thing to know that the Vanex will not rust or to hear that, but to truly know that it won't rust on you. That's a you know, that's a totally different thing. You know, I always heard that the Vanex won't rust. It won't rust. But to actually experience that it won't rust, you know, you're, you know, you're basically digging in and finding out for yourself type of deal. You believe it, but you didn't experience it. So it's just kind of one of them deals. But after you experience it, it's, it's just very comforting to know and Vanex because of these two knives has become you know in the top couple of my favorite steels of all time it's it's such a great steel it still has a screaming sharp edge uh, aesthetically it is held up extremely well it's not real heavy it's just it's a phenomenal EDC knife so let's just demonstrate you know, and I've been using this knife for weeks and weeks. Now, no, I don't carry it every single day and beat the hell out of it, but it's one of the knives in my collection that I've really carried a ton and used a ton because I wanted to see how that Vanex did. 
and I was going to do it with the, the drift way back, but I never ended up getting to it. And then when I got this, I was like, I'm gonna see what this steel is all about and what Kun Wu and this knife is all about. And at every turn, this knife has surprised me. We'll do a full over or a full review of this knife here within the next couple of weeks when I get you know a complete feel for it, couple months of carrying it and using it. Then we'll do a full review on it. This was just kind of an in-depth overview and a, a short-term review in a sense. But if you're looking for a user knife, uh, these are a little pricier, but still you know manageable to get. And you can break it into a four pay, break the payments up. So it is, you know, it's doable. And if you get something like this, if you're not into collecting, this would be the only knife you would ever need. If you're into collecting, this is definitely one that I would have to have in my collection. Just the steel, the design, uh, the build, everything about it is fantastic. And this has become quickly one of my favorite knives of all time. That'll wrap it up, guys. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this guy. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button down below because there is a ton more coming. All kinds of stuff is coming up the pipe in a good way. I love you guys. I'm going to throw up two new videos. Definitely going to want to go check that one out. Otherwise, guys... I'll catch you on the next one.